Hello, my love. Go well, did it? Not so bad. Where's the boy, then? He's asleep. Hey, get that coat off. Dinner's nearly ready. I wish he'd been here. He said, Dad, clear as anything. Get off. He did, too. You see. Come on, Brian. Dad? Dad, Dad? You're a big man, Joe Warner. Mm. <laughs> now, quiet. You'll wake Brian up. You're the one that's making the noise. <laughs> We're gonna get out of here, Polly, one day. A nice semi-detached out at Woodford or somewhere. It doesn't matter, Joe. Not when you're here. Hello, my love. Go well, did it? It can get irritating, you know. Pardon? Well, I mean, when it's every morning, day after day for years, it'll get on anyone's nerves. Oh, sorry. You've got to get yourself sorted out, Polly. The boy's dead and that's it. It wasn't anybody's fault. So he's gone. You're better off looking forward and not back. I know, but I can't help remembering, can I? I mean, you can't just forget, can no, I'm you? I'm not asking you to forget. It's just that every morning you dust that same damn photo. Now, do it when I'm not here, if you must, or better still, put it in a drawer and take it out once a year. You know, sometimes, Henry, you can be really hard. That's for your own good, darling. Henry? Hmm? I've been thinking about Joe. What about Joe? Well... He should be due for release soon. No, it can't be. He was sentenced for 20 years and lost his remission. That last letter the prison sent me, they hadn't had any trouble from him for ages, so they thought they might let him out on parole. Oh. Well, I suppose he had to come out sometime. There's no problem. Doesn't know where to find you, does he? No. What is it, then? Oh, I don't know. Nothing, really. Polly, are you thinking of going back to him when he gets up? Oh, no. No, of course not. There's nothing to stop you. He's still your husband. It doesn't matter. I love you. Right. How about it, then? What, dear? My second egg. Henry? Yes, dear? Would you mind if I sent Joe some money when he comes out? Isn't it enough that you still pay for that grubby little bed sitter out of the housekeeping? How did you know? Maybe I'm not the fool you take me for. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't take you for a fool. It's just that without that place, you'd have nowhere to go, and I couldn't bear to think of that. Why not? Well, I'm gone. Brian's gone. He's got nothing. Can you imagine that? He's a villain and he got caught. So well, that's the real sin, getting caught. So now he pays. Just a few pounds, Henry. Not much. Just to tide him over. If you must. Take it out of the housekeeping, though. Oh, thank you, darling. Remind mind he doesn't get this address. I've got things on and I can't be dealing with the likes of him at the moment. It's all right, dear. I've made sure of that. You don't really mind helping him, do you? I'm not helping him. I'm helping you. Oh, come on. You're both in the same line of business after all. Oh, no, we are not. He's a villain. And I'm a criminal. It's a big difference, you know. <laughs> Chief Superintendent Clay here. And Inspector Rava will be arriving shortly. Let me... That's right, from Paris. Let me know as soon as he gets you, will you? Have you seen Sergeant Dexter this morning? Well, if you do, tell him I want to see him, will you? Uh, all right, forget it. He's here. 
Good morning, sir. Mm. Had a lie in, have you? Right. It's two minutes to nine, sir. I synchronised with Big Ben as I came past. Oh, did you have a good leave? Oh, wonderful. Where'd you go? Exmoor Physical Training Camp. Even on a holiday, you mortify the flesh. Well, it wasn't all mortification. It was a mixed camp. <laughs> In that case, I don't want to hear any more. <laughs> right, Phil, back to work. This drug thing. Yes. Coming to the boil. Claire? All right, send him in. You're about to meet an old friend of mine. Luc Rava, from the Paris Interpol office. What's he doing over here? Well, he's coordinating the whole thing from Paris. The main villains are French. It's a charming chap, Look, Bit of a keep-fit fanatic. You know, uh, antibiotic food. No, 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 macrobiotic. <laughs> That's the stuff. Yes. Come in. Bonjour. Bonjour, Luc. Comment va tu? Très bien, merci. Et toi-même? Uh, je suis bon, merci. Entrez, prenez un chair. <laughs> Une chaise. Mm. Oh, Tom, your French has not improved. Oh, no practice. Meet Sergeant Dexter. Monsieur l'Inspecteur Rabat. It's very right. heard to faire votre reconnaissance, Monsieur l'Inspecteur. You assist, Mr. Clay? Uh, yes. Ah. Then you know about the little uh, game we are playing? No, no, I've been on leave for the last fortnight. <laughs> How's it going, look? Very well, but a slight uh, change of plan. The shipment will be larger, and uh, part of it goes to America. They're pretty confident, then. <laughs> Why should they not be? There are no policemen on their tails? So they go by boat from Turkey to Marseille. The shipment is uh, uh, split there, and uh, part of it goes to New York. That'll make coordinating the arrests more difficult. Well, that's true, but uh, as soon as you make your arrests here, we shall make a, uh, a clean sweep up in France. Then if there is a telephone call, we shall answer it and tell them that all is well. What are they using a code? No, 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 no. The person inside them would tell me if they had a code. What, you've got an informant inside the organization? Much better. We have a policeman inside the organization. Well, I'd rather him than me. He's a brave boy, so we must protect him. That's why the courier is being allowed to run all the way from Turkey to London without an observation being kept on him. So how do we know when they're going to arrive and where they're going to deliver? But all this we do know. Well, uh, the courier will be under observation in a sense, but only at the entry and exit ports here and in France. But even the best thief can't tell the difference between a policeman and a customs officer. <laughs> and he delivers to a shop in the east part of London. To a man named Henry Blaine. If that's what I said, 70,000 pounds, and I'll need it in cash. But of course it's unusual. That's why I want to see the manager. Right, I'll be there at 11 o'clock tomorrow. Thank you. I didn't know you had that amount of money. It isn't money, it's capital. Well. Whatever do you want it for? Business. Well, you don't need that kind of money to run a long firm fraud. You take it in, not pay it out. Haven't you noticed we've been much better off this last year? I thought you must have done well when you'd closed down the last place. Oh, we did, but not well enough, so I've changed my line. It's a cash business, huh? But what sort of a cash business? Well, well, what you don't know, you can't worry over. Henry, should I be worried? No. You should be deciding where you want to live. In a couple of weeks, the world will be ours. Fine. Thanks. Right, look, if you ring Special Branch at Dover with a description of the, of the courier as soon as he leaves Calais, they'll let me know when he lands. And we'll put an observation on Blaine's shop. Yes, you better line up young Trent for that job, but don't give him any reasons. No, right. So, before then, I, I will uh, let you know first when the man leaves Paris. you get some warning. Fine, thanks. When do you expect the run to start? Well, they've already started. But how long do you think it'll take them to get here? Perhaps three days. The sooner the better, huh? Mm -hmm. I don't think I can give you any more information than that. Someone has done a very good job on your Mr. Blaine. Yes, C11 put most of it together for us. 
It's never enough, though. Look at it. Oh, never. He must be running the only long firm fraud ever to keep paying its bills. Mm. Nice little front, though. Cover one criminal activity by the pretense of being engaged in another. Mm, he takes a risk. You might visit him at an inconvenient time. Hmm. Not in this country, look. No, we can't touch him for fraud. Can't even start inquiries until we get a complaint. No, he's pretty safe. He's running this fraud under the name of Carl Anderson. Now, how do you know his real name? <laughs> Never mind. We have him in the net. The name is not important. There's something you can do for me, Phil. There's a mention in this file of a Mrs. Blaine, Polly. We know oh. absolutely nothing about her. See what you can dig up. Huh? Right. Right, look. I'll buy you lunch. Uh, 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 if you don't mind. I know a little restaurant not far from here. Typical. You come here once in a blue moon and you know all the restaurants. This one is special. Look, I can't stand wheat germ. <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. I didn't, I didn't expect you back so soon. I wouldn't... Ah, there, Tom, you see? Now there's a meal for you. If the good Lord had meant me to be a rabbit, he'd have given me long ears. <laughs> Just a few more times, my friend. You'll come to like it. I'm sorry, look. You can't beat real food. Well, the news is, sir, that Polly Blaine isn't. She's in the voters' register at the address as Polly Warner. Hmm. And what do we know about this Polly Warner? Well, I've checked with CRO and with General Registry under that name. Now, she's got no form at all, but her own man is doing 20 years for armed robbery. That's a long time for a healthy young woman to be on her own. Too long, it seems. Joseph Warner. Mm. It's a nasty piece of work, that one. You see, the robbery was over and they'd got the money, but uh, Joseph Warner fired a sawn-off shotgun at a female cashier. She lost an arm. You will not agree, perhaps, but to me, he also should lose an arm. Uh, Phil, there's uh, no release date shown. But if he got remission, he should have been out by now. Yes, right. But he must have been a naughty boy, though. Better ring the prison and check. OK. If he stays in prison a little longer, we take Blaine, and this uh, Joe Warner takes his wife back. If she wants him back after, what, 15 years? Oh, oh these women. They don't forget a man. <laughs> Eva, time for me to go. Right, I'll come down and arrange a car. I can do that if you like. No. I'm going to call in at the canteen on my way back and get myself a sandwich. <laughs> you must try to teach him. Goodbye, young man. It's a losing battle, I'm afraid. <laughs> yes, phone the prison. Hello? Ah, hello, monsieur. Ici Henry Blaine. Tout va bien? Ah, oui, après demain. Oui, à quelle heure? D'accord. Au revoir. Yeah. Fine, OK. Thank you. Goodbye. Joseph Warner was released from prison this morning. Was he now? He was sentenced in 1959, so he served, what, just over 15 years. In 1964, he discovered his wife had left him and gone to live with somebody else. He smashed up his cell and put a prison officer in hospital. Does he know who she's living with? No, but the prison have her new address that she's still Warner's next of kin. She also insisted that he should never know where she's living or with whom. A wise lady. Absolutely. Now, there was another bout of violence in 1965. Now, apparently, Polly had sent their six-year-old son out to do some shopping, and he got run down by a car. Now, Warner went berserk when he heard as he doted on the boy, blamed his wife entirely, even threatened a killer. Now, I hardly like to say this, mm? but it occurs to me to wonder just how accurate this, uh, this information from France really is. Why? Well, because if any part of it is wrong, we're up the creek without a paddle. On the other hand, if it weren't for Luc Grava and his merry men, there would be no case, would there? It's steak and kidney pudding night. I'm going home. <coughs> Coming? No, I think I'll stand and finish reading this, then I'm going to play a game of squash. Yes, yeah, very wise. 
You have been putting a bit of weight on. Well, only a few ounces. I can soon lose that. You know, he's got no form. Who? Blaine, Henry Blaine. No convictions, nothing. Now, supposing, just supposing, the stuff isn't going to him, but to somebody else. Now, well, well we, we'd never track him down. If you want to worry, worry about Joe Warner. One of the benefits of a healthy life, sir. You wake up refreshed. What was the steak and kidney pudding like? A sort of conical shape and flat on top. <laughs> Anything from Lucrema? No, I've checked all the messages over there. Yeah, what time to sort this lot, then? You know, I've been through Joseph Warner's file thoroughly. He's a nutcase. I mean, every job he did, there was some kind of violence and always unnecessary. There's very little violence that is necessary. Yes, fair enough, but this bloke seems to enjoy it. You know, you could be right about him being our biggest problem. Just occasionally, one can be right without the benefits of higher education. Touché. Mm -hmm. So, what do you suggest? Well, I'll put an observation on him, make sure he stays away from Polly, none of our hair. Because if he spooks Blaine, we might lose him. Yes, it's a possibility. But how long do you think we can keep a tail on him without being spotted? Man like Warner. Not long. No. Time's on his side, he can afford to wait us out. Now, there's a better idea and one that's much more helpful to us. How's that? We go and warn Polly Blaine. Well, but surely Blaine would take off, then us going to see him, Warder on his tail. No, he's got no form. He's uh, an ordinary, upright, honest citizen. We simply go and warn him about his woman's husband, offer him our protection. Yes, but even so. How fast would you run away from a million pounds? Ah, exactly. Well. He'll stay and sweat it out to the last minute. I would. And it'll ease your mind, won't it? Would it? Hmm. Well, if Blaine isn't our man, if he's just an ordinary, long, firm fraudster, he'll run for it. I would. But if he is our man, he's got a million reasons to stay, isn't he? Uh, I'll have a large... Uh, Dickie Lambert. Remember me? Joe Warner. Long time, Joe. Yeah. Now, I, I got lost out there. Me, born and brought up two streets away. Not one of the old houses left. Nothing's changed. Great blocks of flats. Must be terrible living in them. Might as well be inside. Ah, they're not too bad. I don't freeze in the winter and there's no rats. Yeah. I didn't recognise you at first, the flowered shirt and all. Oh, it's a new pub, Joe. You've got to have a new image, you know? Nice, isn't it? There's no piano. Yeah, well, look, uh, I've got to get on. You want a drink before you go? Yeah, I, yeah I'll have a large scotch. Uh, have one yourself, Dickie. All right, will you? Um, any, any of the old crowds come in here still? Mm. One or two. Not this time of day, evenings mostly. Oh, Got a different sort of customer now, like. Oh, yeah. You see anything of Polly? No, not these days. Ah, I just wondered. Yeah, well, let's do it then. Yeah. Well, nothing but the best, I promise you. <laughs> yes. I don't deal in rubbish, you know that. A couple of days at the most, all right? Bye. Well, hey. <laughs> Did it go well, do you? Well, when you've got the right kind of merchandise, it always goes well. Are you expecting anyone? No. I'll go. Mrs Blaine? Yes? We're police officers. May we have a word with you? Oh, oh yes, come in. Thank you. Sorry for this intrusion. Mr Blaine? Yes? How can we help you? I'm very pleased you're here, sir. I thought perhaps you'd have been at work. Well, sometimes I work at home. Well, uh, would you like to sit down? Uh, no, thank you. Would you like a cup of coffee? Uh, thank you. No, no, we won't keep you long. It's, um, it's about Joe Warner. Why, what's happened to him? No, nothing, but he was released from prison yesterday morning. Oh, yes, well, they did tell me that Um, they... 
Obviously, you know we're not married. Yes, sir. And you think Warner may cause trouble? Well, he did threaten to kill Polly here. I just thought you ought to know that he's out and about. Oh, he, he wouldn't really hurt me. He was angry when I left him, and then Brian got killed. He was our son, but that was years ago. He'll have got over that by now. Well, anyway, he doesn't know where we live. You haven't told him. Well, oh, certainly not. Uh, but even so, if you're planning a holiday, it might be as well to think of bringing it forward. It's not possible at the moment, I'm afraid. I've far too much on. Oh, well, if you really can't, I'll, uh, I'll put a couple of men on to watching this place, just in case. Oh, no, definitely not. Well, I expect you to deal with Warner without having policemen sitting on my doorstep. If he's dangerous, arrest him or something. <laughs> it's not so easy, sir. You see, he's done nothing yet. And until he does, we can't touch him. See you, Jack. Yeah, I'll be in tonight. Oh, right in. Detective Inspector Ransom, please. Well, I don't want to alarm you without cause, but I do think we ought to take some precautions. Well, so long as he doesn't know this address, there's no problem. So let's leave it at that, shall we? And thanks for the warning. Is there any way he could find you? Your family, perhaps? Oh, he's got no family left, and my mum and dad are dead. There's only my sister. Well, may we have her address, please? Oh, well, well I don't... Can't do any harm. We'll just put her in the picture and tell her to telephone us if Joe calls on her. It's uh, Renee Morgan. 48 William Street, mm -hmm. Tower Hamlets. Well, aren't those all new flats around there? They haven't got to her street yet. Right, well, we won't keep you any longer. Thank you. I'll let you know if I hear anything further. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye. Do you think they suspect anything? About you, I mean? No. No, if they did, they'd never come near this place till they were ready to arrest me. I don't like it, Henry. Listen, darling, you just do one thing. Keep Joe Warner off my back. And what's this going to cost me? Told you, on a house. <laughs> You're not known for your charity, Dickie. What are you after? Well, it's something I think you ought to know. Are you grassing? Come on, Mr Ransom, you'll get me a bad name. All right, Dickie. What have you got? Joe Warner's on the manor. Never heard of him. No, you wouldn't have. Been inside since 59, got 20 years for armed robbery. Just got out. There are more thieves to the square inch on this manor than anywhere else in London. So why blow in my ear about this one? He's a nutter. Violent. Know what I mean? And he's been in here? Yeah. About an hour ago. And you don't want his custom, right? You want me to lean on him to make him stay out. No chance. You got it all wrong. OK, I run a straight place. I don't want him here. But he's no trouble to me. He will be to you, though. Mrs Morgan? Yes? We're police officers. May we come in? What do you want? It's, uh, it's about Joe Warner. Oh, him. He's in prison. Do you think we might come in for a moment? I suppose so, yes. Thank you. Ted? Ted, it's the police. Hey? Eh? That Joe again. Oh, come in. Thank you. What's she done then? Oh. Thought he was still inside. He was released yesterday morning. More was the pity then. Has he been here? Oh, this is the last place he'll come to, I'll tell you. You get no welcome here. He might come here to try and find Polly. You'll get nothing from us. She's a good girl, is Polly. And she don't want no trap with him no more. And who's to blame her? Good girl, my foot. Brought this on herself, she did. Likes her own comfort too much by half. It ain't her fault he's a bad lot. She's entitled to yes, her well, I wonder. Well, what are we entitled to, then? She looks after us, does Polly, and well you know it. She bought us that telly. A boon, that is, when you can't get out. A real boon, that telly. And the telephone. Yes. Well, she only bought that so she don't have to come here. Don't want a nice new clothes messed up down our street. She's living with that man. I'm not interested in family arguments. Now, there's no real trouble yet, but if Joe Warner comes here, I want you to telephone me straight away. What's he up to, then? Nothing, we hope. We just want to make sure. 
Thank you for your time. Did, uh, did Polly say it was all right? Yes, she knows all about it. Oh. Thank you. Goodbye. She's in trouble again, our Polly. Yes? Oh, hello, Renee. Yes, I know. It's all right. No, try to speak normally. Don't shout. Oh, they said that I was to ring them if Joe come here. Is that all right? And No. Now, now listen, Renee. Henry doesn't want any trouble with Joe or the police, so if he does turn up at your place, you ring me. Right? Not the police. It's all right, love. Don't worry. Bye. Thank you. Blaine. Ah oui, monsieur. Demain, oui. Trois heures et demie. Bien sûr. Merci. Et bonne chance. Splendid. Don't do that, mate. I thought I was nicked. You're an old shotless boy, aren't you? So? Joe Warner, I'm a mate of your dad's. I'd like to see him again. <laughs> You'll need a spade. He's been in his box for two years. <laughs> oh, sorry to hear that. He, he weren't no age. Can't see. see. Fifty a day. Filthy habit. Yeah. But, uh, have you got a minute? Let me buy you a Yeah, drink. well, I... I want to ask you something. Oh. Uh, gin, is it? V&T. Hey? Vodka and toilet, they'll know. Uh, vodka and toilet and large scotch, please. I just got out. Yeah. Shows, does it? Has to, don't it? Now, they pulled the old place down. There's no one around anymore. All my old mates are either died or they, they moved out. You're breaking my heart. How long did you do, Dad? Fifteen stinking years. Well, here's good luck. Sounds like you need a bit. What I need is... I've got to get hold of a shooter. I didn't hear that. I'm serious. I've got the money. No way. OK, give me a name. Mickey Mouse. Things have changed. Look, Dad, you got the IRA, anarchists, political nuts performing all over London with shooters. The law's buzzing like bees around honeypot. It's just not on. Your old man would have found a way. Look, it's a couple of quid, you. <laughs> Mates, we go on now, then, Bob. You must be joking. He's a nut. What do you want, then? Straight up. He wanted a shooter. Yeah. You want to get rid of him, Dickie? That old fella's trouble. Hey, I'll tell you, I've seen it before. I do too much bird and the nick gets like home to him. They're lost out here. You see his eyes? I'll tell you, he's a nut. Watch him. Yeah, OK, thanks, Bob. You want a drink? No, nah, later. Go back to the lads. I want to shoot her. <laughs> Detective Inspector Ransom, please. Yeah, well, will he be back tonight? No, nah, no one else. Yeah, listen. I asked him to call in on Dickie Lambert first thing tomorrow morning, will you? Yeah, right. Thanks. Bye. Oh. All your own work? Yes, sir, every syllable. Oh, I've seen worse. Ah, well, you've led a sheltered life, though, haven't you? <laughs> Ah, what, well, is that all for tonight? Yes, unless you want to swing some more overtime. Ah, uh, no. No, I have far better things to do. Not well, with the punchy back. I don't think you'll care to be called that. Mm-hmm. We'll see that you're fit for tomorrow morning. Certainly. As tomorrow should be the big day. Should be. Yes, the courier must be in France by now. You know, that is a thought. If you've got a suitcase full of drugs, where do you spend the night? Most expensive hotel you can find, I should think.
You need a license to purchase one of those. Can I help you at all, sir? Yes, I think you can. I don't think there's anything urgent here, sir, Why but I would like to... Why has he gone to Rinny Morgan? What? Joe Warner. I mean, if he wants his wife, why ask in a pub? Why not go straight to the one person he knows can give him the answer? Her sister. Which suggests he's not really trying to find her at all. Yet he's the right sort of character to look for revenge. It worries me when people don't conform to type. You want to get rid of him, Dickie? That old fellow's trouble. <laughs> See his eyes? I'll tell you, he's a nut. Watch him. Watch him. Watching. Watching. Looking rough, Dicky. I want to spend a few shillings. Take a month in the Canaries or something. I couldn't leave this place, Mr. Ransom. They'd rob me blind. <laughs> the way you're going, you won't be around much longer to worry about it, will you? Yeah, well, uh, sorry. Uh, you want a drink? No. I'm too early in the day for me. Go on if you need it. Now, what's so urgent, Dicky? <sighs> Joe Warden was in again last night, tapping up one of my customers. Short of bread, eh? No, he's got plenty of money. He's asking after shooters. Are you sure? Positive. Did he get one? <laughs> oh, of course not. Who did he ask? Bob Shotter. Yeah. Want to use your phone? Feast your eyes, Polly. It's beautiful, isn't it? I think you ought to tell me what it's for. I'm entitled to know. You're entitled to be looked after, Polly. Now, I do that, don't I? Yes, dear, of course you do. Look, I don't want to pry, but I couldn't stand you going to prison, that's all. No money's worth that. Oh, you'd find another man. Like you did when your husband went inside. Henry, that's not fair. I love you and I don't want to lose you. Yes, I'm sorry, it's just... Well, I'd rather you'd never met Joe Warner. Surely you can't be jealous. Jealous? I never said I... Thank you, dear. Sorry. I'm in the magic business, my love. There's £70,000 in here, and I'm now going to take this to my shop, wave my magic wand, and in two weeks' time, it will turn into a half a million. Half a million. So cheer up and stop worrying. Listen, Shotter. If you want to stay alive on my manor, you better come up with some answers. And fast. I had a big night last night. How good are you first thing in the morning? Let's try again. He wanted a gun he had the money to pay for it. Right. But you refused him. It's not my line of business. Did you tell him where else he could try? Ask him. It's not my scene. Yes or no? No. Look, gents, I don't want to interrupt, but you see, I've got to open up in a few you minutes. You stay closed until we say. Did he say what he wanted the gun for? No. What impression did you get? What did you think he wanted it for? Well, he's just done 15 years for blagging, obvious, isn't it? Maybe not. You asked, I answered. Maybe he wanted it to pick his teeth with. How Was would I know? urgent? Did he seem desperate to get hold of a gun? Sure, no. You got up tight pretty quick when I told him the scene. Nah, he's a nut. They're always in a hurry. I'll tell you this, though. You'll find a shooter somewhere. Stand on me. OK, Bob. Thanks for your help. You can go back to bed now. It's all the same. I'll stay and have a live enough. Thank you. I'll have that drink now, Dickie. Sure, Bob, sure. Then you can sit down here and tell me just how long you've been so matey with the law.
Maybe he shot his ride. I mean, maybe he has got a robbery lined up. Maybe. I mean, the fact that he hasn't managed to get a gun and made no attempt to find Polly hardly suggests that he's after her, does it? Could have got a gun from somewhere else. Perhaps he already knows where she is. Or at least he's certain he can find out whenever he likes. Well, from the sister, but he hasn't been near her. Not yet. Clay? Yes, look. Yes, we're ready here. Thank you, look. Au revoir. The courier left Calais at ten. Right. Well, that'll put him at Blaine's shop at about four. Yes, we're running short of time. I think we'll take Joe Warner out of the game until after we've arrested Blaine, gun or no gun. 17 Seaforth Road. Right. Sir. So, he got a gun after all. No, I don't think so. He's had this tucked away somewhere. Look at it, it's quite useless. Now, that's why he was after another one. Oh, that's enough to bring him in, if we can find him. He drew out nearly 200 pounds day before yesterday. Well, he's not short of money, then. Mm. Well, I don't think he's here, Phil. I don't think he's coming back. I'm afraid you're right, sir. There's nothing here, no personal belongings, nothing. What do you suppose was in this? Well, almost anything. Hmm. Look, I must get back to the office. They'll be uh, ringing from Dover shortly. Look, you go along to that shop and find out what our Joe bought for himself. Right. Clear off, Joe Warner. That's no welcome, Rennie. Really. You get no welcome here and you know it's a clear off. I'll have the law on you. Will you, Rennie? Really? How about you, Ted? It's like she said. You best go. There's nothing for you here. Just one question. Nothing I said, nothing I meant. I want to see Polly. I want her address. Oh, well, she don't want to see you. Tell me her address, Rooney. No, she's saying You'll not what? get an address from us, so make up your mind to that. I want that address. Yeah, yeah. Don't you tell him, Rooney. He don't frighten me. I just want to see her. No. Talk to her, that's all. No, no Rooney. Oh, Ted. It's a 21 Clough Court. You damn fool. Where's that, Rooney? What is it? So, she made it to Woodford. You never used to be on the phone. You telephone the police, Sweeney. I shouldn't do that. I might have to come back if you do. Just browsing, sir, or can I help you? Ah, yes, thank you. Not satisfactory. I don't know, I didn't buy it. I didn't think so. Didn't recognize the face. Now I want to know what was in it. Oh, I don't know, Ted. Well, I do. He's not going to get away with it. He said he might come back. I mean, what could I do against him? He won't come back. If he does, I'll run him over, so help me. Don't be daft, Ted. You couldn't do nothing. Look, will you go to that telephone woman, or do I go myself? You're all right, I'll go. No good will come of it, you see. It's not our business. Right, I've got the description. Now, can you tell me what time his train's due in? Fine, much obliged. I'll fill. Our courier has left Dover. I think we've got trouble. Joe Warner bought a crossbow. That's what was in the box. 
you don't hold up a bank with a crossbow. Polly Warner's death is too high a price to pay for arresting Blaine. Look, hop out and line up those DCs for observation on Blaine's shop. If we don't get him, we get the courier. Right. Hello? Yes? A what? Oh, good Lord. Look, I can't be sure any longer that he doesn't know where you are. Uh, we'll try and find him, of course, but I think it would be wise if you left the flat. Uh, hang on a minute. Look, ring her sister. What's her name? Uh, Rennie Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Tell her she may get a visit from Joe Warner. Right. Sorry about that. Now, did you get what I said? Yes. I'll tell Henry. Well, we just have to leave, that's all. Yeah, thank you. Goodbye. I thought we'd fancy a kappa. Couldn't get through. What are you talking about? Weren't no answer. I well, don't talk rubbish. There must have been. I was there, wasn't I? I'm telling you, weren't no answer. But you didn't do it properly. I'm not that stupid. It were ringing, but she weren't in. Well, I thought you were just going to telephone the police. No, I was ringing Polly. Well, she said if Joe cut me here, I was to ring her, not the police, cos Henry. He didn't want no trouble. Well, there's going to be trouble if Joe turns up there. Now, you get back and telephone that policeman. She said... I don't care what Polly says. You ring the police. Now, go on. She'll blame me. I'll tell her it was my fault. Now, go on. No, it's no go. The GPO are checking, but all they can say is that the Morgan's line is unobtainable. That's odd. Well, we'll have to leave it. Got your warrant? Yeah, it's quite safe. Clay? Mrs. Morgan, we've been trying to contact you. How long ago was this? Did you tell him? Yes, all right. All right, I understand. Oh, but don't worry, we'll deal with it. Warner's been there, right? Yes, he threatened them and got Polly's address. Oh. Still not to worry. A couple of the lads are watching Polly's flat. She'll be quite safe. Let's go and get Blaine. No. Why couldn't they keep him inside for a few more weeks? He said he had some sort of a weapon. I'm frightened. I'm in the middle of the biggest job I've ever done, and your precious Joe is putting the whole lot at risk. You know that. I'm sorry, Henry. Look, all these years I've never seen a policeman, not so much as a speeding fine. Now they're round my flat and on the phone every five minutes. I don't need it. Henry, I've said I'm sorry. They think that Joe really means to kill me. What are we going to do? Let me think. We're going to have to abandon the flat. Yes, I know, but what but about... you do as I say. Go back, pack what you can into the big suitcase and take a taxi to the My Wyvern Court Hotel and book a double room for two weeks. That should be long enough. I don't want to go back there. All right. Go as you are. But there's all my jewellery and stuff. Heaven's sake, woman, make up your mind. Can't you come with me? No, I can't. I'm expecting someone and I don't want you here when he arrives. All right, Henry. I'll, I'll see you at the hotel then. All right, oh, no, push off. Look, what? Out the back. Oh. Oh. They tell me you didn't want to see me. Joe, you shouldn't be here. I'd have helped you. Like you helped Brian. That, that was an accident. It could have happened to anybody. You were busy with your fancy man. And you sent him out for a packet of cigarettes. A little boy of six. I loved him too. You said you loved me. But you left. You were away too long, Joe. So was Brian. You sold his life for a packet of cigarettes. Can I buy him back, Polly? Well, 
Ja. I can't bring him back, Joe. Nobody can. Look, it doesn't matter what you do, it won't bring Brian back. Nor you, Polly. You wanted all this, and you got it. But it cost us Brian. It wasn't like that, really. I just wanted to see you, hear what you had to say. Now, you've got to pay for what you did. Oh, no! Oh, no, please don't! No, no, please don't! Oh, no. Polly! Ça va bien? C'est très bien. Right. We can ring Luke and tell him the good news. Sorry, come in, sir. Thought I'd better check what's going on. What the devil are you doing here? Well, your message said stick tight to Polly Warner, sir. Well, I followed her here and she hasn't come out. Well? She went out the back. Where was she going? Home to pack. And it's just as well for her that I did have somebody watching the flat. Davy's still there? Yes, sir. But he's round the back of the block. If she or Warner go in the front entrance, he won't see them. Blast! Look, tidy up here. You come with me. When we get there, you take the lift, I'll take the stairs. Polly? Joe? Joe? Sir, you must be the fancy man. Whatever did she see in you? Police, Joe. You've got to die too, fancy man. Police, Joe. Chief Superintendent Clay. Do you want to see my warrant card? There, Joe. Do you see? It's all over, Joe. Just relax. Just relax, Joe. Hand it over. Hand it over, Joe. Sorry, sir, the lift was actually... Am I going home now? Yes, Joe. You're going home. <laughs>